Hi, my name is Ashish and in this video we will have a look at virtual network service endpoint. So we use virtual network service endpoints to extend the private address space in Azure by providing a direct connection to the Azure services. Service endpoints lets you secure your Azure resources to only your virtual network. Service traffic will remain on the Azure backbone and doesn't go out of the internet. So let's see if you're trying to access the Azure storage uh, through the service endpoint. The traffic will route only between the Azure services and will not go out. So by default, Azure services are all designed for direct internet access. All Azure resources have public IP addresses, including past services such as SQL database, storage. Because these services are exposed to the internet, anyone can potentially access the Azure services. Service endpoints can connect certain past services directly to the private address space in Azure. So they act like they are on the same virtual network. We use the private address space to access the past services directly. Adding service endpoints doesn't remove the public endpoint. It simply provides a redirection of traffic. Azure service endpoints are available for many services such as Azure Storage, SQL Database, Cosmos DB, Keyvault, Service Bus, Data Lake. For a service like SQL Database which can't be accessed until you add IP addresses to its firewall, service endpoints should still be considered. Using a service endpoint for SQL database restricts access to specific virtual networks, providing greater isolation and reducing the attack surface. So how service endpoints work? To enable a service endpoint, you must do two things. You should turn off public access to the service and you should add the service endpoint to the virtual network. So when you enable a service endpoint, we restrict the flow of traffic and allow the Azure virtual machines to access the service directly from the private address space. Devices cannot access the service from a public network or a deployed virtual machine, VNIC. If you look at effective routes, you'll notice the service endpoint is the next hop type. So let's say for example, <clears throat> if you have not enabled enable the service endpoint so your source should be default and the state is this the address prefix is this next hop type is vnet then the internet and if you will enable the service endpoint the default hop would be same 10110 slash 24 the next hop would be vnet then the default source and the active then the zero the internet then none. So now if you will see that the source is default and the address prefix is one of your uh, private addresses in the Azure. So the next hop is virtual network service endpoint. Service endpoints and hybrid network. Service resources that we have secured by using virtual network service endpoints are not by default accessible from on-premises network so let's say you have disabled the internet section and you have enabled service endpoints for some of the azure services that will not be accessible from the your on-prem data centers to access resources from on-premise network we use nat ips if you use express route for connectivity from the on-prem to azure you have to identify the nat it nat ip address that are used by the express route and that can also be delivered to you, your partner edge service providers. By default, each circuits use two NAT IP addresses to connect to the Azure Backbone network. You then need to add these IP addresses into the IP firewall configuration of the Azure service resource. So if you are trying to access of enabled service endpoint for Azure storage, you would have to enable the IP into the IP firewall configuration of the Azure storage. This was the theory of service endpoints. Uh, I'll try to show you how to enable them in the portal or in the CLI. Until next time, have a good day. Bye-bye.